This is Twit. The moment you've all been waiting for. The moment, the reason you sit through this entire show. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, thank you for putting up with the rest of the show. It's time for brown liquor. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to a super classic because we're all going to be visiting family and things. And many folks that don't buy a lot of whiskey often have this particular whiskey, arguably the original, the very first modern single malt is Glenfiddich 12. So uh, Glenfiddich is not the oldest distillery in the books. They started in the, in the late 1880s. First production was 1887 by William Grant. They are still family owned. They've not been bought by any of the big conglomerates. They're on their fifth generation. Uh, they do their own barrel work. They do their own water handling. In the 1960s was when they really did this whole move towards uh, very contemporary whiskey. They, wanted, they were the first to start advertising single malts. And so uh, a designer named Hans Schlager, very famous designer in the 1960s, came up with that triangular bottle that is sort of what Glenn Fittick is known for. And they did that marketing and sort of spread the idea of the single malt whiskey around the world, which I think is part of the reason that people aren't that wildly excited about Glenn Fittick because it's, it's almost like Tommy Hilfiger. It's over put out there. Too many folks. Oh. So, uh, they're also one of the very first places to ever build a visitor center. Oh, so they, they, they've had, and they have a phenomenal tour. I absolutely recommend it. The one interesting thing about their tour is that they do hire pretty girls to do the tour. The lady that took us around was from Estonia. Uh, but it's considered, they, it's like one third of all single malts sold around the world of Scottish single malts. Glenfiddich 12. It's unbelievably popular. And the Glenfiddich distillery is massive. 16 wash stills, 27 spirit stills. Their stills are relatively small. They have their own coppersmith on the browns that maintains the stills and does all of their own work on that. Uh, the way One of the tricks they learned in the 60s to make a consistent whiskey before anybody else was really making consistent whiskey is that they split the distillation into two different types of barrels. They'll put about 90% of it into bourbon casks, 10% into sherry casks. And then go their their age range, 12, 15, 18, uh, and then they'll vat them. They'll combine them all in a wooden vat, which it'll probably spend a year in that vat as well. And then they're, they're working to the flavor profile. So they learned to do this in the 60s, well before other distilleries were doing it. And so they have a very, they were able to make the same whiskey every year before almost anybody else did that. That being said, they also pioneered things that people don't, aren't big fans of these days, like... Uh, they color the whiskey. They use chill filtration. Uh, all of those tricks to make a very consistent product. Uh, it's imminently drinkable. It comes in at 40%, which is the old-fashioned kind of way to do spirits. Uh, these days, we mostly see 45s and 47s that are not chill filtered because then they, they won't clog because they're a little bit higher. But it's only $40. You kind of can't go wrong. Hmm. We have to, at I some point, it would be fun to have you, Richard, do a gift guide because... Certainly some families, if you brought Glenn Fittich, they'd say, oh, great, we love that. Or, oh, mm -hmm. fancy, if they've been drinking, you know, I don't know, old Johnny Walker or something. But uh, yeah. then there's some people who consider themselves connoisseurs, and it'd be nice to know what a good gift bottle would be for somebody who's a little more serious and that kind of thing. So maybe before, yep. as we get closer to the holidays. So yeah, it's a very week. normal thing for me to get a message from someone saying, Hey, I, <laughs> yeah. I want to buy a bottle of whiskey for this guy. I got a hundred dollars to spend. What do you think? Who would and you I bring Glenn Fittich to? Who's whose house would you bring that to? Um I mean I'm and the way I described it was you're going to encounter this. Like you go into a place that has only one single malt, it'll probably be Fittick. Right. Right. Uh it's uh I wouldn't tend to buy it unless you have really a novice drinker. Okay. Uh that being said, you know, if you're an experienced drinker of whiskey, go back and try it again. It's better than you remember. So it's not bad. It's, a, it's good. It's not nothing bad yeah. about it. It's okay. it's lovely, but it is it is the classic definition of the light spay. Yeah. And kinda, so often as we mature as whiskey drinkers, you look for stronger flavors and more range, more wood, and all of that is kind of muted in Fittick. It's yeah. a very because they're working towards that consistent product. That uh, it doesn't shine as brightly as some other whiskeys you could try. It's generic. It's a generic, perfectly fine whiskey. It's the price you pay for defining the class of single malt. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, you become the, the um, 
the liquor you recommended last week, the Pendleton Rye 12, the, the Pendleton not Rye. Yeah. gotten yet, but they do have it at, in Pennsylvania, just not at the store we go to. Oh, I see. So the next time we venture further afield, we're going to go grab that one. I'm finding more and more people, folks sending me pictures of the bottles I talk about. So yeah, there's that's folks cool. out there picking them up. Yep. But, uh, I, I pulled this one because we don't normally talk about it. It's easy to go off into the la-la land of crazy whiskey. And we are going to be visiting uncles and things that they probably have one. I have been given many bottles of this over the years. <laughs> I, don't, there you go. I don't have them anymore. Well, that's a good sign. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yep. That's, yeah. That is yeah. good. Yeah. It's a good, and solid, nice. drinkable, consistent yeah. whiskey. Would you call I mean, it quaffable? Yeah, quaffable. it's but it's super old school. They've been basically making it the same way for six. Would you like years. to nosh? <laughs> it's a quaff. Let's quaff and yeah. nosh. <laughs> I hate those words so much. <laughs> you realize before the 1960s, you didn't drink single malts unless you were in Scotland, and even then it was pretty rare. Yeah. Isn't that blends. interesting? Isn't That's that interesting? What you drink. Like a Crown Royal or something. Well, like a. Uh, Johnny Walker, Johnny Walker, or yeah. a Chivas, yeah, right, right, or those were brands. the those were the big brands. I mean, Chivas was like the fancy brand when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And so that you know that the then then Grant and Sons started this whole movement with the single malt. That whole idea right. created a prestige brand around it that's arguably outgrown them. While they are crying all the way to the bank, selling more <laughs> of that than anybody else. Uh, I know the answer to this, but Wojo's asking in our Discord. The fact that it's called single malt implies there's a double malt. Is that right? Or it, what does single malt mean? No, I'm a, the single malt is supposed to be, it means a single malting of the barley. We talked about this back in the day when we did the Scottish yeah, We have series. a whole series of these on uh, YouTube. Yes. Yeah. And today, it really means it comes from one distillery. Okay. They, yeah. they really messed with the idea of single malt right. these days. I know in wines you get blends a lot, especially uh, here in Napa, sure. where they you know they want consistency, and so they'll Anywhere, do these they'll do these blends. We get blends here that are just they bring in the grapes from somewhere else, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't even have to be from the area. Yeah, and the winemakers uh, aiming at a certain consistency and and kind of cooking it up by putting in different grapes. Well, and that's yeah. part of the trick of the vatting I was describing. Like the in a bottle of Glenfiddich twelve is not only twelve year old whiskey. There's older in it. They're trying yeah. to get to that consistent flavor profile, and so right. which is the get right. an which barrel. is the thing that escapes a lot of winemakers, frankly. Um, where you should, you know, they are are also shooting for this kind of consistency, but it seems hard in the wine world. Yeah. Um, no, it's true. There are very few wines, uh, very few varietals that yeah. are year to year because well, they're very so consistent. they're so impacted by the weather that year right. or whatever right. you know the higher than or lower than normal temperatures, lots of fog, you know, whatever it yeah. might be. We Depending find, grape, uh, you know, some are more resilient. We find uh, Cote de Rhone's, especially Chateau Neuf de Pop, is very consistent uh, year after year. A lot of Bordeaux's are pretty consistent. Burgundies, you never know what you're going to get year to year. Yeah, it could be anything. French wines are horrible for that because you have no idea what they are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> our you know, table, our table know. wine is Chateau Neuf de Pop because it is. Yeah, it's nice. very consistent year over year. It's not expensive, but it's. I think it's a good wine. I and mean, they represent a common customer. Well, I want to know what I'm going to get. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, when I pick up the bottle, I know what to expect. Yeah, I'm not here. I'm not, I'm not here to, to travel. I just want, want to. Nice yeah, yeah, exactly. Want, I'm, I'm not drink. looking to be surprised by my drink. Yeah, yeah no want, surprises. Want, no surprise. Richard Campbell is our brown liquor guru. You'll find mm -hmm. him at runasradio.com. And he's in Orlando right now. What are you in Orlando for? I'm at the Dev Intersection Conference, and it's getting later in the day, so I think people are coming back from the Disney's, and gradually the internet is dying. <laughs> oh, right. We'll let you, let you go <laughs> okay. and find yeah. something else yeah. to do, something more gainful to do. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. Runnersradio.com.net rocks is his other show, uh, and he's available for, uh, for talks. He's, he's great and in great demand, too, by the way. <laughs>